Does the United States of America still use the gas chamber? Well, yes, it does. And in this video, we're going to be exploring the history of the gas chamber in the United States. And we're also going to look into two condemned souls who were released from it. Hello, my name is Janine. Please do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button. It just makes me so happy to know you're there. Thank you so much. Now, welcome to Now You Know. In the late 1800s, the most common form of execution was hanging by the neck until dead, or facing the firing squad. That was until Old Sparky was invented. Now you see, the death penalty has always been a controversial topic. Even the people who support it wonder if the methods of execution are actually humane or not. That is the reason, in the early 1900s, the United States was looking to see if there was an alternative method available. Nevada found one in 1924. It's the gas chamber. In the early 1900s, a man by the name of G. John was a member of the Hip Sing Tong Criminal Society in San Francisco's Chinatown. That society dealt primarily in narcotics and liquor, but they were not the only gang in the area. This caused a territorial dispute between Hip Sing and the Big Kong Society. G. John was instructed to carry out a hit on Tom Quan Ki, who was a member of the Big Kong. On August 27, 1921, G. went to Ki's residence and fatally shot Ki with a 38 Colt revolver. G. was convicted and sentenced to death by the District Court of Mineral County, Nevada. And it just so happened that earlier that year, the Nevada State Legislature passed a bill authorizing the use of lethal gas to be used as a means of execution. That meant G was eligible. Of course he appealed this, but it was denied, and even the Supreme Court of Nevada complimented the state legislators for inflicting the death penalty in the most humane manner known to modern science. Or so they thought. The first attempt to execute G was done while he was asleep. Officials pumped cyanide gas into his cell, but this attempt failed as the gas leaked out. They then built a makeshift gas chamber in the butcher shop of the prison. They used a cat as an experimental test subject. Then, on February 8, 1924, G was strapped into the chair inside the chamber. Thirty people came to witness the execution through a small window. It was a cool and humid day. The temperature inside the chamber was 52 degrees, but ideally it should have been more around 75 degrees. That was for the gases to fully expand and fill the room. But the heater inside the chamber was not working, and some of the cyanide just puddled on the floor. With some of the gas still in liquid form, this caused the potency to be greatly reduced. G lost consciousness within about five seconds, but he still struggled. He was gasping for air and bobbing his head as he slowly suffocated to death for ten full minutes. This was the first known documented use of the gas chamber. I don't know about you, but I was shocked to discover that it was the United States that developed this method. I always thought it began in Germany. If you thought the same thing, let me know in the comments. Despite G's execution going horribly wrong, other states started using the gas chamber as well, Mississippi, Arizona, California, and North Carolina. Most gas chambers that were used in America were made by Eaton Metal Products in Denver, Colorado. They were made from steel, and there was an adjoining chemical room where the chemicals were mixed. To prevent the gas from condensing back into liquid form, the execution area was designed to withhold a temperature of 80 degrees. They also needed to make sure the electrical outlets and lights were safe from creating a spark as the gas was extremely explosive. Now we will head over to California, around the end of the 1930s. This is where Juanita Spinetti lived and conducted her business. But it wasn't a normal business. Juanita was a knife-throwing gangster known as the Duchess. She ran what the newspapers called a crime school where she would take in young homeless men and she would cook, clean, and house them while training them to be professional criminals. They would mug, steal, and loot 
and Juanita would just rake in the cash. She issued each man a $10 a week allowance. That's equal to $177 in today's money. Two of her henchmen, Albert Ives and Robert Sherrod, were conducting a robbery when Albert shot a man in the stomach. The gang was worried that Robert would crack under pressure from investigators as he was already talking way too much about the killing. So Juanita laced his drink with a poison, and when he fell unconscious, they beat him before throwing him into the river in an attempt to make it look like an accidental drowning. This caused Albert to fear for his own life. He eventually escaped the gang and turned himself into authorities. He was committed to the insane asylum for life, and Juanita was arrested. During the trial, her very own gang members testified against her, and she was ultimately sentenced to death. Don't let these innocent-looking photos fool you. As the warden at San Quentin State Prison once described Juanita as the coldest, hardest character, male or female, he has ever known. He said she was a homely, scrawny, nearsighted, sharp-faced scarecrow. He even went so far as to call the Duchess a hag, evil as a witch, horrible to look at, and impossible to like. So it sounds to me like Juanita really wasn't a good person. On November 21, 1941, at the age of 52, Juanita was the first woman to be executed in the state of California, and also the first woman to be executed in San Quentin's gas chamber. Since the introduction of the gas chamber, and up until 1999, it is reported that 589 men and 7 women were executed using this method. The gas chamber has mostly been replaced by lethal injection but there has been a lack of drugs needed to perform these executions in that manner. That has led some states into reconsidering using the gas chamber again as a secondary option. If you would like to learn more about the history of the gas chamber, I would suggest reading The Last Gasp, The Rise and Fall of the American Gas Chamber, written by Scott Christensen. A link to this book is in the description box below. Thank you for exploring this dark side of American history with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and thanks for listening.